Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Guys, today is a big day for Papa 1957. So at the start of this takeover, he had a lot more silver than he currently does. However, now he's very low on silver, but he's much better off on time because before this, he was doing Ultra Nightmare Clan Balls with, I believe, three keys. It was mostly manual, some auto, well, not mostly manual, but it was some manual in the beginning and then auto, and so no quick battle. But now I'm going to be showing you guys the last... Um, Clan boss run that he actually has to run without quick battle, hopefully ever. So this team right here is not my idea completely. I found this on the Hell Hades Optimizer and then made some adjustments to it, but it's working fantastic. So what we got going on here, I'm going to show you guys the speed tune on the Deadwood Jedi website real quick. This is a nightmare version of the team, which speaking of, it's going to one key all affinities except for magic, which is kind of a, a problem. However, it's like a two key there. Um, Newt, weak hits make things pretty RNG heavy. But this team works on Ultra Nightmare, all affinities except for Magic, and then works on Nightmare as well with only a small, small change with putting one champion in the team. So as far as the actual speed tune goes, here we go. We have Rowan. I got her at the top to make sure you remember, put her in the lead spot. Because Emic is going to get stunned if you don't, and you do not want Emic taking any stuns whatsoever. You want to take out any possibility that he gets the stun. If Rowan gets stunned, it's not a big deal. If Maneater gets stunned, it's not a big deal because he's going to have block debuffs up if the run is going correctly. So as far as the speeds go, here, here you go. I'm going to move myself over just a little bit so you can see the speeds very, very easily. I'm going to link this down below as well. So if you want to adjust the speed just a little bit, you can come in here, see how much wiggle room you have with the champions, and kind of adjust it for yourself if you're um, used to using the Deadwood Jedi Clan Boss calculator a little bit. So here's the speeds. Here's the breakdown. Let's jump in here and look at the actual presets of these champions. If you're looking at the Clan Boss calculator, you can already see the presets basically though. As far as the stats, you can see them over here on this right-hand side. And then you can see the presets right here. So Rowan, Maneater, open with the A1 ability, prioritize the A3. Newt opens with the A2 to keep up that weaken, prioritizes the A3. You can see the stats over here for this area specific. Emic right here, opens with the A3, and then priorities as you can see. Stats, like I said, over there. And then Farrakhan opens with the A1, turn off the A2. The reason why is because you're going to stack up so many debuffs on the bar, it's going to be capped. And then you're going to miss the decreased defense. Also, because you want to make sure that any chance that Farrakhan has, he can place decreased defense. Retaliation, revenge, accessories, both those things, you really want to get a lot of them because if he's counterattacking as much as possible, he's going to be placing that decreased defense once again as much as possible, allowing Newt to hit that max HP threshold as much as possible. Um, also, guys, while I'm thinking about it, drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Very much appreciated. So looking at these champions, the first champion I want to take a look at is Newt. So Newt is a champion who is amazing in many different areas of the game. So you don't want to build him to lock him down to one area specifically. So a lot of the builds that I've seen for this team specifically are Newt's around like 170 speed, which is not really usable for other areas of the game. However, at 232 speed, he's still very useful for a lot of different dungeons. He's still very useful for Hydra especially, which is probably the area I'd most want to use him in, honestly. But he also works amazing in this clan boss team. So 236 speed with the Demon Lord um, area bonuses active, 373 accuracy. That is very important to keep in mind, is if you're building him for clan boss, you need like 250 accuracy. If you're building for Hydra, you're going to need a lot more, like 360 on Nightmare. So if you're wanting to place the, the weekend on everybody, build them with enough accuracy with that in mind, as well as the uh, decreased turn meter for things like Dark Fae. So make sure you're building with all the stats for the other areas in mind, but no Relentless. No Relentless allowed. Do not use it. It will ruin the team. You don't really need Revenge Accessories either because he does keep counterattack up on himself pretty often. So as far as this team goes, that's his speeds. That's his build. Crit rate, crit damage, defense, accuracy, speed. It's the most important things for a newt. As far as his skills, nothing much to say. Book him out. He's an amazing champion. You don't need cruelty. Cruelty, don't do it on anybody because Newt's A3 ability reduces the defense of the boss by 30%, and even the highest level of cruelty doesn't do that. On Hydra, it's a little bit different because Newt's targeting different heads, so you can still use cruelty there, but on the clan boss, there's no reason to do it. I mean, they don't stack, unfortunately. I wish they did, but they don't. So things like Brimstone, things like Phantom Touch, those are going to be like your two go-to blessings for most champions. As far as his masteries go, um, for Newt, this is what we have set up. This doesn't really matter, but to be honest, I'll probably change this because it will add some extra damage, but Newt does heal himself on the A3 ability. So the thought process is basically, Emic's passive boosts the damage by 20% of champions under 20% HP. 
Newt is going to be below 20% HP for a lot of the time, but he's also going to be above it because his A3 is a max HP skill that heals him whenever he does damage. So heals him by 30% of the damage dealt, basically a full heal. So honestly, I should probably just swap off this life drinker, which I probably will later on, but it's one keying at the moment. Could be used in other areas of the game, so it's really up to Papa 1957. Whatever he wants me to do, I can make it work. So now let's talk about Emic. So Emic's artifacts, nothing super special here. We have him below 100% crit rate, which is fine because Farrakhan does give 30% increased crit rate boost. So we're well over 100% now. Uh, make sure he has good defense. Very, very important because you do not want him taking the stun. You want him to stay as healthy as possible for as long as possible. So defense, make sure it's good. Definitely want to have some good defense. Ideally, 3,200 or even higher is going to be ideal for him to make sure he doesn't drop his HP too quickly. As far as the skills, he's bringing the cooldown reduction, which is incredible. This makes the team's damage skyrocket. But also the passive skill. Whenever an ally's HP drops below 20%, increases the damage dealt by that ally by 20%. This is so good because a lot of the champions aren't going to have Life Drinker. Now, if the champion is somebody like maybe Emic, who doesn't do a ton of damage necessarily anyways, boosting it by 20% may not be as valuable as getting the counterattack from the Retribution Mastery, which is you need Life Drinker in order to continue to activate that. So on Emic, I do have Life Drinker, though I may actually switch it off. Now, as far as this A3 ability, it's really what's required for the team to actually work. So everything in Emic's kit is very, very important. Make sure you just go ahead and fully book everything, but especially the A3 ability, you have to book that. The A2 as well, uh, yeah, you have to book that as well because you have to give the cooldown reduction to Maneater. Now, as far as his masteries go, that's what I currently have. We have War Master, and then we have Life Drinker. Like I mentioned, I don't know how hard Emic actually hits. I need to pay attention to that. But it's kind of like a toss-up, okay? If we have the counterattacks, he may be doing a little extra damage with the War Master procs plus his A1, and it may outweigh the benefits of just the 20% boost in damage from his passive ability. I'm not for sure, but you guys can test that out, play with it however you want. But these are his current mastery setups. Let me show you one more time. But everything here, just don't go Cycle of Revenge. That will ruin your team 100%. So don't go that. Everything else should be perfectly fine. So next up is Maneater. So Maneater is currently in this build. Um, speed's most important, 70% crit rate. Farrakhan's given 30% boost. Good attack, good crit damage. Nothing else really matters. As far as his skills, we have Phantom Touch. It's going to add some extra damage to him. More damage, better luck, right? Better consistency on that one key. It still is a gear threshold that you have to hit, but overall I'd say it's pretty easy. Uh, everything's fully booked as well. As far as his masteries, there is no Life Drinker here. We do have the... Counterattack stuff, which isn't going to happen that often. So Man Eater's build is pretty simple. Next up, let's go talk about Rowan. So Rowan is going to be the stun target. She's a Void Affinity Champion. It doesn't have to be Rowan. The most important part is that these the speed makes sense, that they're able to be the stun target, and that ideally they're Void Affinity, because if they're not Void Affinity, then on, like, say, Magic, if the uh, champion is Force, well, the Magic Clan Boss is not very likely to hit that Force Affinity Champion. It's possible, but it's not very likely. So the speed, 177, good crit damage, very good accuracy. We only need 250, though, so anything above that is kind of overkill. But hey, it's working perfectly fine, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. As far as her Masteries go, she has Giant Slayer. She has a triple hitting A2 and then a quad hitting A3, which her A3 ability places um, four poisons. So we have Master Hexer. She's a very good champion. She hits hard, places a lot of poisons. So, hey, excellent, excellent option for a stun target as well as a void champion to bring in for those extra poisons. Now, next up is going to be Farrakhan the Fat. And I believe this is the last champion that we're going to be showing and talking about before we get into actually running the team. So, Farrakhan, Revenge Accessories, Retaliation, Artifacts. Make sure you have those. It's going to make keeping that decreased defense up so much more consistent. We have 176 speed, good crit damage. Make sure the accuracy is above 250. If you have all that, you're going to be in a good spot. Blessings, Phantom Touch. Go Phantom Touch, no problem whatsoever. A1, A3, most important. The A2, not really used in this specific run. It is a good skill, but not really used here. And then his Masteries. No Life Drinker. We don't have any counterattack because it's not really going to happen that much past the initial couple turns. And then Support, we have uh, Master Hexer to extend the duration of that decreased defense. So there you go. There is Farrakh in the Fat. So, right here, the last time... Papa 1957 will ever have to watch his clan boss go really ever. I mean, period. That's all there is to say. Like, quick battles from here on out, get the one key, and we're done. Unless it's on Magic Affinity, but we still get the one key here, hopefully, and then Magic Affinity just do two quick battles, and you're done. That is literally saving hours. 
possibly possibly hours, maybe at minimum just an hour per day, but hours if you're on a mobile device because the clan boss run is slower. But if the average clan boss is like 15 minutes per day and you're doing three keys, that's 45 minutes just on Ultra Nightmare. So getting yourself a team that can one key at least once just to unlock quick battle is fantastic. Ideally, you get a team that can one key all the time, which this one will do on every affinity, I believe, except for magic. Magic, we've been having some trouble, but as long as you have the stun target down, you have Farrakhan in place in the decreased defense consistently, you have M or Newt built at this fast speed, versus the 170 speed or 190 speed that I've seen him at so many other times, then the run should be without any problems whatsoever. I mean, Newt is using his A3 on every clan boss rotation, I believe. Every clan boss uh, three turn cycle. So I'm gonna give this a few more turns to make sure that it's looking good. We'll give it to about turn eight and then I'll have my webcam, let it run full auto, and then we'll go over to the nightmare version of the team as well. Let you guys see how that actually plays out. It's gonna be lower damage because we're missing one damage dealer spot, but nightmare is far easier to one key than Ultra Nightmare is, right? So, turn seven, we're passing the million damage per turn already, which is incredible, especially for a team like this, where you don't have a Seeker, no Deacon, no Champion, no Aeris, no Champion with increased speed, no turn meter boosting, nothing like that. With a team like this, doing one key is very, very impressive, I'd say. Turn eight, 8.6, 8 8.8 million damage. We're gonna pass nine million this turn. So we're doing over a million damage per turn. You can see how much Newt is hitting. That was only with decreased defense applied. So if we had decreased defense plus weaken, he would actually be hitting the max HP threshold. He's not gonna go over that, but we do want him hitting at least the max HP threshold, of course. So 11 million damage right now, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and hide my webcam. I think you guys get the point. We're gonna fast forward it through this match and see how everything actually ends up playing out. All right, guys, there we go. A beautiful 74 million damage. No Seeker, no Deacon, no Eris, nothing like that. We have Rowan coming in with 19 million damage. Maneater with 9.7 million. Newt with 31 million damage. Emic with 8. Farrakhan with 5.5. This is some fantastic, fantastic damage. And obviously, you need Newt. These champions, you can make some adjustments, but this team is going to work fantastic, okay? Um, so 74.4 million damage. Let's go ahead and skip this. Let's go ahead and see now the beautiful... Beautiful battle, or beautiful, beautiful quick battle feature is finally unlocked. No longer does he need to sit here and watch 15-minute clan boss matches, 20-minute clan boss matches, none of that nonsense. And to go alongside that, we also, with the same team basically, to switch to the Nightmare preset, have a Nightmare version working. The Nightmare version of the team is very, very similar, except for now, instead of Farrakhan, we have Doom Priest. Doom Priest is going to be cleansing the stun every time Emic takes it, and here is the speed tune for this team. Uh, the champion speeds over here on the left, 251 for Emic, exactly the same. Everybody, Doom Priest is going to be 178 if you're using Rowan. If you're not using Rowan, you're going to have to change the speeds a little bit, test the run, um, watch the run, see if Emic is not getting cleansed by Doom Priest. If he's not, then adjust Doom Priest's speed. Because here, Emic is going to use the unkillable and the taunt just before the clan boss does the big slam. And then after that, it's going to be cleansed by Doom Priest. This very first stun should be take, taken by somebody else. The very first stun could go onto Emic and then him not get cleansed. So you need to make sure that it goes onto anybody else other than Emic. If you have Newt using his um, A2 ability at the correct time, then it should just go to Newt because he does have the counterattack up with this version right here. The delay of the, or opening with the A1 ability, or opening with the A2. So Newt is going to be set to delay this one turn. His counterattack is going to stay. And now the clan boss should hopefully target Newt. And then from there, it's going to be Emic uses unkillable, Doom Priest cleanse, cleanses the stun. Emic unkillable, Doom Priest cleanses the stun. It should go that way the entire fight. So here are the speeds of the champions. Rowan, 177. Maneater, same thing as before. Newt, same. Doom Priest, 178. Emic, 251. If you have speed sets, anything like that, you have to be mindful because it could change the speeds just a little bit. So this is Magic Affinity on Nightmare, which is going to be the worst for Newt. But as long as we go to turn 50, that means the run went perfectly fine, perfectly smooth, and there's no problems whatsoever. Turn 50, 45 million damage. There we go. Emic did 5 million. Doom Priest doesn't have War Master, so she does nothing. Uh, Newt did 14 million, which is pretty good for weak affinity. Rowan did 17 million, and Manny did 7.8 million. So this team, like I said, they're both full auto. They're both quick battle friendly. The Nightmare team is pretty specific as far as Doom Priest's speeds because too fast, like even one speed higher, 
it messes this whole thing up basically. Like it's it's all wonky now. One speed lower, well, she's not getting turns before Emic, and eventually Emic passes her in the rotations. So she has to be specifically 178 if Rowan is 177. There are some changes you could probably make to make this work, but I'm not gonna get into that because honestly, I don't know. This is the version that I'm working with. This is the version that I'm running, and this is the version that's going very, very smooth. I mean, one key's nightmare, full auto. The other version, one key's ultra nightmare, full auto. Quick battle on both of them. So basically an hour plus per day saved. So guys, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. If you're interested in having an account takeover done for you by me, click the link down below, get signed up. I'll get into contact with you on Discord and we can move on from there. So Papa 1957, I hope you enjoy this team. I'm sure you will. I mean, watching the clan boss run is, man, it's long, it's rough. But once you get that quick battle going, it feels so much better. So guys, don't forget to drop a like on the video, comment as well. Um, if you find anything interesting about it, maybe you want to comment about the, the uh, masteries. Do you think I should change them? Either way, drop a comment down below, and I'll catch you all in the next video.